was happening around the bay was absolutely nobody was looking at the bay as a whole bay. And each private owner, each city, each county was proceeding under the pressures of population growth and demand for flat land, was proceeding with plans to fill in its shallow parts of the bay. So virtually everybody was sort of on a bender of let's see if we can fill our part and we'll have more land for taxable development. Berkeley by the 1950s was built out. There was no more vacant land left in Berkeley. If Berkeley was going to expand, the place it was going to expand was out into the bay. By 1961, a plan to fill 2,000 acres of the Berkeley shoreline was rolling along. The plan had powerful corporate interests behind it, including the Santa Fe Railroad, which held deeds to submerged lands near the shore. In the hills above the bay, Kay Kerr, Esther Gulick, and Sylvia McLaughlin went to work. We determined to go ahead and start an organization and to uh, stop the filling. We started wherever our friends were. We <laughs> used every list that we could think of. Uh, university lists, church lists, uh, club lists, in January 1961, the makeshift trio, now calling themselves the Save San Francisco Bay Association, sent out their first letter. The letterhead stated the new organization's five simple objectives, and, thanks to the women's connections through their husbands at the University of California, presented a who's who list of prominent, instantly recognizable supporters. Included with it was the map of the shrinking bay. We just used that to, uh, from then on. Uh, on our literature that uh, we entitled it Bay or River, and people were just really shocked by that, I think. And, and so we sent that out with our first uh, invitation to join our fledgling organization. And they had what at the time was a radical organizing principle. We're gonna volunteer our time as leaders, and we're gonna ask people for a dollar, one dollar, so that we can afford to mail them information. And what we really want is not their money, we want their voices, we want their names, we want to be able to invoke a large group of people in support of our goals. In March 1961, just two months after the meeting at Grizzly Peak, the Berkeley City Council found its chambers suddenly packed one night with a crowd of citizens, opposed to the master plan for Phil. The Save San Francisco Bay Association had emerged onto the political scene. Many people wondered how these women could succeed because, of course, they were just housewives. You have to put yourself in the mind of the kind of sexism that was just so prevalent at that time. These women used their own uh, talents. They were genteel, but they were very strong and tenacious. And they didn't give up. The fight for the Berkeley shoreline would last more than two years. But in 1963, the Save San Francisco Bay Association's persistence finally paid off. In a stunning turn of events, a newly elected city council tabled the master plan for Phil. The Save San Francisco Bay Association had won its first victory. <laughs> 